Thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk about how to determine a cut setting on a material that you've never done before. I've got some 8th inch Rollmark Duramark sign plastic that I've got to make some pretty large signs with today and I have not used this 8th inch material. I've uh, engraved and cut a ton of their 16th, uh, 16th inch material but I have not used this 8th uh, inch. It also has the 3M backing pre-applied um, that I'm going to need and I know that's going to add to our cut setting. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you my approach on determining a new material cut setting. I run into people all the time that are very apprehensive about trying new materials because they don't understand or they don't know what approach to take in order to determine their speed and their power to cut a new material out. It's a lot simpler than you might think. One of the things that I'm going to tell you is <clears throat> You should pick a power and stay with it. Don't change it. And today what we're going to do is since I know what my cut settings are for my 16th inch of this material and the power on that is 75%. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to pick that power. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to change it. And then what we're going to do is I know that the settings that I have for my 16th inch is, is not going to work with this 8th inch, but it gives me a place to start. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a series of squares just in this little corner. Uh, we're going to pick the 75% power. We're going to look at what our speed is for our 16th inch. And it's going to have to be considerably slower because this is thicker material. Remember, we got to slow down to get that energy to go through this material. And before you know it, we're going to have our uh, settings for our new thickness of sign material. Once I determine that, I'm going to add that to my materials library so I've got it for in the future. I've got several different colors of this I've got to uh, engrave and cut out. So I want to make sure that I remember it. So just remember, don't try to adjust your speed and your power when you're trying to determine a new cut setting for a new material because you'll chase your tail. It's not easy to do. So pick a power. In this case, I've already got a setting uh, for 16th inch. It's 75% power. We're going to keep that power the same. And then we're going to just slow down the speed until we get a consistent dropout. And one additional thing that's added is I've got 3M adhesive on the back of this that I'm not used to cutting. I haven't cut this row mark with the pre-applied uh, adhesive. So we, we've got to determine that. And once we do, then I can go forward with my engraved settings, those kind of things. You're going to see once we get into light burn, it's really pretty straightforward on how quickly you can determine what your cut setting is going to be for this. Leave your power alone. Pick a power. Usually, I pick between somewhere between 70 and 80 percent. It really doesn't matter, depending on what size machine you have. Uh, and then just adjust your speed based on what you're seeing. If it hasn't cut through, you're going to slowly drop that speed until you get a consistent dropout. If, uh, if it drops out and you're getting maybe a little scorching around the edges, you can increase your speed a little bit. And we're going to dial in the sweet spot for this 8th inch Romark Duramark sign plastic. Let's go to light burn and we'll get started. Okay, to get us started, what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a one inch or three quarter inch square. I'm going to use a user origin down to absolute coordinates. Go to user origin, going to be up in the upper left hand corner. Um, I'm going to color it red because red is my cut setting so I can keep things consistent. I've gone over here to the material library. I've gone to my two color board. I've gone to the the thickness that I normally cut, which is much uh, thinner than this, I've assigned its cut setting, which you can see is 60 millimeters per second at 75% power. Remember that I said before, we're going to keep this power the same, and I know that I'm going to have to drop this speed uh, to cut through that material that is twice as thick and also has that 3M adhesive on the back. So what we're probably going to do is just as a guess, and it's truly a guess, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go ahead and cut this speed by half. 
So I'm going to start at 30 millimeters per second just because the material, side material, is twice as thick and that should get me in the ballpark. Remember that with side material you don't want to use high air, you want to keep it uh, with uh, low volume air. And the reason why you want to do that, if you use high volume air, it will take that color and wipe it on the side and you'll get streaking and just discoloration, it won't look clean. So with side material, typically you want your low volume air on a Thunder, which means you're turning this off. And we're gonna say okay. And so now our start setting to see if this is gonna be enough to cut through our eighth inch Romark Duramark sign plastic with a 3M adhesive, and this is the ADA style, uh, is gonna be 75% power at 30 millimeters per second, and that's where we're gonna start. Now, the way I'm gonna approach this is we'll start there and see what we get, and then we'll modify our se settings based on what we see. Okay, we've got our first cut parameter loaded in our um, controller. It's at uh, 30 millimeters per second at 75% power. And this may do it, we'll just have to see. Um, what I really wanted to cover today is just the approach on uh, how you do this. And so I've got this set up now, uh, just up in this upper corner. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and give this a try and see if she cuts out. Now you can see it dropped it out. Got some residue on it. I think I'm going to go ahead and increase the uh, pressure just a little bit and also increase the power just a little bit. See if we can get rid of uh, all of this stuff. Okay, so what I did is I just dropped the speed by two. So I went from 30 millimeters per second to 28 and uh, still the 75% power. I increased my air pressure just ever so slightly, so I went over here on this low volume side. I pushed this button here. That turns it on for 10 seconds. And I, I uh, originally cut with virtually no, uh, just very little air, and I'm gonna turn that up to a couple of pounds. Um, and we'll see what that does. Okay, here we go at uh, 28 millimeters per second, 75% power with a slight increase in airflow. Wow, huge difference in uh, what's going on here as far as backlash. You can see that I don't, I don't have any um, spray. Let's see if it drops out. I'm going to move this down, pull this out, drops right out. Nice clean edge, very little contamination on the surface. I think that's going to be our, our cut setting. But you can see that going from just uh, not enough air and what was happening here when you were getting all the black on the top of this sign plastic is it wasn't pushing all the way through and a lot of that soot was coming back and ending up on the top here. So I knew that my, uh, my power, even though it dropped out, it wasn't fast enough. And so I needed to increase my airflow just slightly and um, reduce my speed just slightly. Now in this particular case, because it's got a black side, it's gonna engrave from yellow to black you could probably use more air and get away with it. But if this is like, I've got some red and white sign material, and if you have a white edge, if you use too much air, what it does is it wipes that uh, red color down on the side of this white edge. And so here you could get away with a little bit more air, but on that red and white sign material, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to use my power and not my air to make sure that I don't have a bunch of contamination like this. 
But you can see, so what I would do if that didn't work, I would continually drop my speed and I would just keep going across here until I got a nice clean cut uh, that didn't have a lot of contamination. It didn't take us very long to, to, to figure this out. But what I wanted to do is just basically show you the process. And it's not hard to do. Keep your power the same, adjust your speed, and before long, you'll have what you need to cut that new material out. One other thing that I'd like to show you that a lot of people aren't aware of, and I use this feature all the time. So we just established our cut setting at 28 millimeters per second at 75% power. And that's all well and good, but I've got a little bit more information that I wanted to make sure I save. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the file show notes section. And I've put a note in here, three, uh, three PSI airflow for yellow, uh, yellow to black eighth inch material. And a, my cut setting may be different for the red and white because I can't have the red color going into the white. So I might have to increase my power and reduce my airflow uh, to get the same job done. But um, this is a great place to put web links, notes that you want to make sure you remember for this particular job. And so this is a great place to do it. This stays with the file and you can even click right here and uh, have it open up when you open this file so if there's certain things that you absolutely have to remember this is not a bad feature either i love this because i don't have to do, uh, put those notes on the desktop cluttering up my workspace so just if you haven't used the show notes feature it's a great feature in lightburn and uh, use it you'll enjoy it well as you can see Following that process, it really doesn't take too much time to determine what your cut setting is going to be on new material. Um, keep one parameter the same. I prefer to keep my power the same and adjust my speed, but you may want to do the opposite. The bottom line is that I wanted to show you the steps that you go through to establish new cutting criteria for materials that you might not be used to. Don't be afraid to try this out because once you understand that process, um, you'll be able to try a lot more new things and wide, broaden your horizons on the materials that you can make. I hope this information was helpful. If you do me a favor and hit that like button, I'd really appreciate. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that are making this content possible. Everybody have a great day.